Describe the five basic robot components. There are five main components of a robot. A manipulator, an end effector, a controller, drives, and a programming device. The manipulator, also called the arm, is the part of the robot that actually moves and reaches. The end effector is used to grasp parts or tools. One type of end effector is the hand or gripper. A controller is the specialized machine that coordinates a robot's movements. Drives are electronic circuit cards in the controller that supply power to the robot's motors. A robot's programming device, such as the teach pendant shown, is the interface a robot programmer uses to load programs for the robot to execute and also to control other robot functions. List eight rules of robot safety. A robot can be very dangerous because it can change the position of its arm very quickly, which may result in serious injury. Therefore, always practice safety around robots. There are eight very important robot safety rules to follow. Remove all obstructions from the robot work area. Check for signs of damage to the robot. Remove loose-fitting clothing, ties, scarves, sleeves, etc. Tie up long hair. Remove the teach pendant from the robot work area. Locate the emergency stop button. Ensure safety glasses are worn by people in the area. And ensure all people are outside the robot work area. Describe the operation of five types of robot safety devices. Like many other automated machines, robots do not work alone. They work with tooling, fixtures, part feeders, and even other machines. The robot's work area and the equipment within it are called a work cell. For safety, the work cell must be designed so people cannot enter it while the robot is operating. Depending on the type of application, one or more of these five devices are used to protect people from injury around robot work cells. Emergency stops, barricades, light curtains, safety mats, and signs and tape. Operators who work in a robot work area must have access to a device called an emergency stop push button. This device must interrupt power to all aspects of the robot work cell, including external and associated devices. All devices must default to a safe condition. Emergency stop push buttons must always be within reach of any person who is near or in the work cell area. Physical barriers are used to protect people from robots. 
chain link fencing, or walls around the work area of the robot can be used to restrict access to the robot. Some factories limit access to the robot work cell using a beam of light. These focused light beams are positioned to form a light grid or light curtain. When interrupted by a person entering the guarded area, the light curtain acts like an emergency stop push button and stops the robot. Another popular safety measure is the electric safety mat. These mats are designed with a switch inside that opens when someone steps on them. They can be connected to the robot controller to shut down operation immediately. Warning signs should be placed around the robot work cell. The floor around the robot work cell can also be marked off with black and yellow tape to help direct traffic around the hazardous area.